today the robot goes, you know, you have it doing its thing. Um, well, I can have it um, orchestrate uh, what's going on with the conveyor because that's basically, if you abstract, it's just another set of behaviors. Um, so, so, the, so we have the robot orchestrating the behavior with the conveyor so that if the robot is learning that what's going on downstream is now resulting in maybe I shouldn't be building quite as many parts, then it can slow down itself and the operation of the conveyor so that everything is slowed down to accommodate what's going on downstream. So I mean, the analogy I would use was, I don't know when it was invented, you probably know, so just in time, whatever, 30 years, we can make up numbers, right? Oh, we're on film, so we should be, try to be accurate. 30 <laughs> years ago, just in time, right? So at, at Hewlett Packard, we saw, uh, I ran operations supply chain for Hewlett Packard for a number of years. At HP, we stopped measuring in just in time environments uh, on time delivery because I didn't really care about when the part showed up on the line. What I cared about was how much inventory did I have and did I not shut the line down? I mean, those are the things that were more important to me as opposed to on-time delivery. So as I start to think about, you know, what am I trying to accomplish? Um, if I had said up front, you're going to do these things every single time, um, there's going to be some circumstances where it doesn't make sense. Well, if you've got a thinking, sensing robot that can detect anomalies downstream that then result in it wanting to change its behavior, if it's orchestrating the work cell that it's part of, it can change those to improve the operation of that work cell. Well, what's to stop it? Okay, so now I have it orchestrating the, the conveyor. What I have it, you know, providing orchestration of the tester, and then you know, and then the next tester, or it's orchestrating some other more traditional robots. I mean, eventually this gets to the point where um, it's orchestrating bigger and bigger parts of the factory. And just like, in some ways, just in time eliminated a portion of the of the planning process, I think we are moving to, so these factories that are going to be created in the future are a lot less planned and a lot more leveraging of real-time information and intelligence to operate the factory at what is, at that point in time, the best possible way. Um, an, an, another quick analogy I, I might make is, um, anybody here from New York, New York City? Okay, so we can make this part up together too. Okay, so you'll know, so keep me, keep me honest. So you get out of Penn Station, give me directions to get to the Empire State Building. So, I, so you can probably give me directions to get out of Penn Station and get to the, uh, the Empire State Building. But that's at the macro level. I mean, if you actually tried to follow those instructions, you would either, you know, trip over the dog, fall into a hole, get run over by a taxi, um, run into a person head on, right? Because uh, the reality is when you're walking that step, you're, you're, you know, you're dodging and weaving and you're slowing down and you're speeding up, you're, you're accommodating um, real time, you're, you're pulling in real time information about what's going on in your environment to optimize the way in which you get there. And in fact, if you weren't, you wouldn't actually get there because at some point you probably would be killed by one of those things. Um, so, so we're gonna move to an environment which is less about trying to plan all of that stuff up front and more about how do I leverage data and insight, not all of which is coming from inside the factory, by the way. Um, and we have experiments like that going on too. We're pulling in a lot of unstructured data uh, from outside the factory and then using that to drive the behaviors of the robot so that they're able to do things in much more efficient ways, so the factories operate in much more efficient ways. So I think our, the concept of a traditional planning engine um, I mean, I wouldn't want to declare the death of the ERP, but there's something in the future that's going to look a lot different than, than what it looks like today. Mm -hmm.